Well, hello there, my friends. I've got a great little word for you today. But first, first, I want to show you how the prayer cabinet is coming along. Look at this. Oh, you're going to love this. Some of you might even get invited to one of my prayer meetings. This will be invite only. We, we only have room for like 30, okay? Look at that. Huh? The roof is coming on. Isn't this beautiful? There we go. It's just a little cabin. Well, little. It's 24, 16 by 24. I was praying one day, actually at Craig Broker's church. I was at the altar praying. I said, Lord, how big should I make my prayer crab? And then I heard the Lord say, 16, 24, Matthew 16, 24. If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. So 16, 24, that's the dimensions of this cabin. So it's just a little one. We can get about 30 people in here, but look at that. Look at that roof. That's, that's what we're going to be looking up at when we're laid out on the floor. Hallelujah. Look at this beautiful, beautiful locks. It's all scribed just perfectly. You can't fit a dollar bill in there. Just absolutely beautiful. Nice big window on this side. Big window on that side. And then this big here, huge, naughty log across there. That's where the that's where the um, the loft will start. So when you come in, it's got a really high ceiling, and then there'll be a loft uh, up there. And so we might have thirty people down here praying and thirty kids upstairs um, playing. But uh, the loft will go out past the end, about another eight feet past the end of the wall, because. Um, because it kind of jets out on the other side. So nice little deck out front where we can sit, all covered. Oh, I love it. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. So I haven't done a little uh, video in a while. I've been so busy. Oil patch has been just uh, pulling on me like never before. It's just been so flat out, but uh, got a little lull here for a few days, which is kind of nice before like the next four fracks start up and then we go crazy again. But just meditating today, I, you know, me and my numbers, uh, today is January 31st. I was meditating on Deuteronomy 131 for 131. Uh, and uh, I wanted to share this one with you, but... Uh, I want to go back a couple of verses. For those of you who can handle an extra three minutes in a video, I know some of you, you won't watch unless it's like a four or five minute video. Well, I'm going to go a little longer today. So uh, I'm going to read a few more verses. I feel this is significant. I believe that many of you are coming into a, a real breakthrough season, promised land, the kind of thing God's been promising. He has had things in store for you for a very, very long time. But he's brought you through a wilderness. And it's important that you pass the tests of the wilderness. And it's important that you don't grumble and complain because those who grumble and complain in the wilderness miss out on the promised land. And so uh, that's what this little passage is about. And uh, I want to start reading Deuteronomy 1. I'm going to go all the way back to 21. And uh, if that's too much Bible for you, well, I'm sorry. Here it is, Deuteronomy one twenty one. I've been praying and 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 just contending for this one verse uh, for like the last two years. I have my alarm on my phone set for one twenty one every day, and at one twenty one, I pray for Canada in the spirit of Deuteronomy one twenty one, which says, "See, the Lord your God has placed the land before you." Hallelujah! He has placed the land before you too. All right. He says, uh, go up, take possession as the Lord, the God of your fathers has spoken to you. Do not fear or be dismayed. We have got to take the land. Thank God for the truckers. I hope that you've been thanking God for the truckers. These truckers who are contending for freedom in this nation were sent by God. 100% sent by God. Did you notice what day they started the convoy? January 22, all over Canada, people, we were one little group, uh, and I don't know, there's probably a hundred of us, but we were one little group, but all over Canada, God was speaking to people saying, 
Fast and pray 22 for 22, 22 day fast for 2022. And all over the nation, thousands of people, many on their own, not like me and Art called the fast, but many other people heard God calling the same 22 day fast, 22 for 22. Thousands across this nation fasted and prayed from January 1 to 22, many on water. We got a little skinny there at the end. But what happened on the last day of the fast? The convoy began. Hallelujah. Don't tell me that's a coincidence. We fast and pray for 22 days. And on the 22nd day, God sends thousands and thousands and thousands of truckers to Ottawa to say this far and no more. Man, I'll tell you what. That was, that was the Lord answering the prayer of the hungry, fasting, praying intercessors all over the nation that said, man, I'll, I'll pay a price for breakthrough. Would God use truckers? Absolutely, God will use truckers. God answered our prayer, and he sent the truckers. And uh, and we're going to see a breakthrough. I know it. Anyway, so this is going to take a while to get through this passage if I keep preaching. So, go up. Take the, lo- the land. Take possession as the Lord, the God of your fathers, has spoken to you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Verse 22. Then all of you approached me and said, this is Moses talking, let us send men before us that they may search out the land for us and bring back to us word by way which we should go up and the cities which we shall enter. The thing pleased me and I took 12 of your men, one man for each tribe, and they turned and went up to the hill country and they came to the valley of Eshkol and they spied it out. And they took some of the fruit of the land in their hands and they brought it down to us and they brought back a report and said, it is a good land which the Lord our God is about to give us. I want to prophesy. It is a good land that the Lord your God wants to bring you into very shortly. Yet you were not willing to go up. Hello. But rebelled against the command of the Lord your God. And you grumbled in your tents and said, Because the Lord hates us, he has brought us out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. Where could we go up? Our brethren have made our hearts melt, saying the people are bigger and taller than we. Your enemies are always bigger and taller than you. But God, it always comes down to But God, God says, yeah, they're bigger. Yeah, they're taller. Yeah, they're better looking and they're smarter. But I will be with you. End of conversation. If God is with you, you win. All right. But if you believe, if you believe the Israelites, they didn't believe. The people are bigger and taller than we and the cities are large and fortified all the way to heaven. And besides, we saw the sons of the Anakim there. Then I said to you, do not be shocked, nor fear them. The Lord your God who goes before you will himself fight on your behalf. Did you know, you you think you go somewhere and then you're hoping that you can get God to come to and rescue you. God went before you did. He's the God who goes before you. You think you're in a mess right now? He got there first so that he could prepare the circumstances to bring you a great victory. He's the God that goes before us. Listen to this. Verse 30, the Lord your God who goes before you will himself fight on your behalf just as he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. Now here's verse 31. Today is January 31. Here's your 131 for 131. And in the wilderness, say wilderness, hallelujah, this is where God does the greatest work inside of us, okay? He works on us in the wilderness before he brings us out. He took Jesus into the wilderness for 40 days. He was working on him, all right? When he came out of the wilderness, that's when the power kicked in, hallelujah, hallelujah, 131. And in the wilderness... You saw how the Lord your God carried you. Just as a man carries his son in all the way which you have walked until you came to this place. I want you to know that during this last wilderness season, there were times where you just didn't think you could make it. Friend, he was carrying you. 
He was carrying you through that season. You wouldn't have made it if it wasn't for the Lord your God carrying you the way a father carries his son. Now listen to this. Listen to this. Bad news for the Israelites. May this not be true of you. Until you came to this place, verse 32, but for all this, you did not trust the Lord your God who goes before you on your way to seek out a place for you to encamp in fire by night and cloud by day to show you the way in which you should go. Then the Lord heard, verse 34, ah, these ones hurt. Then the Lord heard the sound of your words and he was angry and took an oath saying, not one of these men, this evil generation shall see the good land which I swore to give to your fathers, except Caleb, and it goes down, Joshua, even Moses missed out, all right, because he failed the test that God put in front of him, he missed out on the promised land, listen, this, this is painful, this is painful, it says, for all of this, you didn't trust the Lord your God, verse 34, then the Lord heard the sound of your words, and he was angry, then the Lord heard the sound of your words and he was angry and he said, fine, you're not going to enter in. Friend, I want to tell you something. God is listening to your words. God is listening to your words. And in this season, in this time, even through this wilderness where he carried you, watch your mouth, watch your mouth. God is listening to your words. He says in the book of James that your words are like the rudder of a ship. They steer your life. If you want to enter into the promises of God, if you want to enter into the promised land that God has for you, watch your mouth. Because don't assume that just because God wanted to give you a promised land, you're definitely going to get in, enter into it. Many people don't. Many people don't. And many people in this last season, this wilderness season, their mouths just went all over the map. And they stopped trusting in God. They start, they started putting their trust in man. Or they just got depressed and discouraged. And they blabbed and they grumbled. And I'm sad to say, many of them will not enter into the promised land. However, you. What about you? Have you been passing the test that God has put in front of you? Will you pass the test that God puts in front of you this week, even today? I want to tell you something. Don't grumble. Don't grumble. Don't complain. Don't look at your enemies and say, oh, they're too big. Oh, we're so little. Put your trust in God. Start praising him. Start thanking him. Start gathering with your tribe. If you don't have a tribe, you need to find one. Uh, I'm not just talking about what church you go to on Sunday morning. I'm talking about who are those ones? Who's that little that little tribe of hungry uh, kingdom people who are pressing in prayer? Do you got one friend who will pray with you, who will gather with you and seek the Lord? Do you even show up at prayer meetings? Okay. You want to live a kingdom life, you got to show up at prayer meeting, okay? You got to have a place where you come together and gather and cry out and worship and seek the Lord. And friend, guard your mouth because I, it, it it really reveals what's in your heart. You've got to you've got to you've got to put your trust in God. Don't let God hear you grumbling and complaining because right now, right now he has a promised land just in front of you. And it's absolutely imperative that you keep your mouth pointing you in the right direction. I pray that you will. Anyways, I've gone long, 14 minutes, so I'm going to uh, cut this one off. But uh, like it, share it, and uh, you just keep thanking God, praising God, knowing that this wilderness season is not his plan for the rest of your life. This was his time to shape you, to break some stuff off of you, to get, uh, to break a few bad habits out of, out of you, to get you to learn how to lean into him and cry out. And it was, uh, it was opportunity for you to pass some tests, but there's a promised land just ahead of you. If you can keep your heart and keep your mouth pointing you, 
in the right direction. Hope that was a blessing to you. God bless you. We'll see you soon.